56 degrees at 9.53. Go easy, easy, easy. Stay, 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 stay. Stop. He's like, no, I'm going out. I'm going out. You can't stop me. It's almost 10 o'clock in the morning. And it's gorgeous. 55 to 60 degrees right now. Some sunny breaks. Mackerel sky. Mackerel sky. Bad weather is nigh. <laughs> I can't remember the poem, but it's something like that. All right. This morning's question, what is weather? In science, we always ask what is or why is. It's actually either easier to say why is there weather on earth? The number one answer, the sun and gravity. <laughs> Combined, differential heating of the earth's surface by the sun. It gets a lot warmer at the equator where it's very sunny and direct sunlight and it gets a lot colder at the North Pole especially now with no sunlight so cold air is dense it wants to travel south and warm air is low density it rises and wants to go fill that void created by the sinking air at the North Pole it's a huge circulation and this morning we have a huge weather front a boundary between that warm air headed for the North Pole and the cold air at the North Pole headed for the equator. And this morning, the weather front or boundary between warm and cold is from the shore of the Labrador Sea in northern Newfoundland, Labrador, about 60 degrees north latitude, south all the way about 3,100 miles to the shore of the southern Gulf of Mexico in Veracruz, Mexico, at 20 degrees north of latitude. This is an extreme high amplitude trough of low pressure crossing the middle of the United States. Ah, love the crows. They're the dolphins of the sky, you know, they're very intelligent. They say, hey, Tim, why don't you show that graphic from Content Weather Guy this morning? Or is it Content Weather Guy? Phil <laughs> in Plymouth, he's all about the waves. Notice that ridge in the lower left. And he calls it a wave break. He's all about the waves going over the ridges and entering the trough. And he's got that divergence there over the northeastern United States. So you have a digging trough that's going from neutral to negative tilt. Uh, how deep can we go in the weather jargon here today? Anyhow, we're not tracking a single storm this morning. We're tracking that boundary. And along that boundary, we have many waves of low pressure. If we look at the surface analysis from the government late today, you have the boundary now stretching from Eastern Canada right down to the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see four lows, one near Caribou, Maine, another near Philadelphia, another near Roanoke, Virginia, and a fourth near Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, if we go to the middle of the night, now we only have two lows. So what's happening is we're getting cyclogenesis and eventually there's gonna be one strong low and there it is, tomorrow morning over the seacoast of New Hampshire. So that's cyclogenesis and it's deepening rapidly with a tremendous feed from just north of the equator on the east side and from just our side of the North Pole on the west side. So the energy at work here is about as extreme as it gets. Now, I guess the best news is that low hasn't formed yet. Uh, but the bad news is we not exactly sure where it's going to be and it's a really tight call. I think we should start with the wind forecast because there are wind advisories and it's serious on the east side of that low. Last night the NAM jogged west a little bit from where it was yesterday so that's inevitable. Models jog east and west all the time. Anyhow, their wind, there's the gold. I have to stop it right there. Uh, what's that, about uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning? Potential wind gust to 85 miles an hour at the dune tops on the national seashore. It's called 10 meter AGL, 10 meters above the ground level. And it's about 33 feet. So you know your trees are 33 feet tall. So the tops of the trees may experience wind gusts of 85 miles an hour on Cape Cod tomorrow morning if this verifies, then up to the main coast. And what a sharp cutoff just to the west of that. There's hardly any wind at all. Okay, we'll keep that going. Then the wind picks up from the northwest and we're turning a lot colder. All right, so now how about the timing of the precipitation? 
This morning, it's raining in western New York. Why don't we look at that radar near Buffalo and look at the wind on the velocity azimuth display from that radar. And it shows a maximum of 109, 110 knots, close to 130 miles per hour at 22,000 feet. So that tremendous flow of air up in the sky creates lift. If it's not very windy down here and it's tremendously windy up there, think of it as a vacuum. And that lift is what causes the incredible heavy precipitation. And it's not just the wind up in the sky, it's the fact that the, the air is so cold on the back side of this front and so warm on the front side and that uh, differential advection also causes lift. And also our mountains cause lift. So we have the moisture coming from just north of the tropics and it's gonna be wrung out. Incredibly heavy rain. All right, here's that precipitation type and timing. Remember the clock in the upper left, 15Z, 18Z, 21Z. Now we're getting to sunset and there's the green as rain. Changing to snow in Vermont by 6Z, it's snowing in the Green Mountains. Now that rain snow line has jogged west a little bit. Heavy snow tomorrow morning in Vermont, clipping just northern New Hampshire and far western Maine. So that has moved to the west a little bit. And then it winds, uh, winds up and pulls out by sunset tomorrow. It's just about done. And uh, there's a lot in there. Here's the quantitative precipitation forecast. QPF, how much rain? The heaviest rain, and we're talking maybe an inch or two in an hour or two for three or four hours tomorrow morning gets us to three or four inches first thing tomorrow morning that's why we have a flood watch in effect so three to four inches of rain are possible and that should be done by about sunrise really uh, just after sunrise in much of southern new england and snowfall i know there's been some crazy runs of some of the guidance and uh, i'm going to just stick with the nam here uh, for consistency and the violet is six inches and the purple is 12 inches so the higher elevations of vermont are going to get a foot of snow a place like jay peak still possibly gets 18 inches of snow and sorry the white mountains and the mountains of maine snow is not as likely and just it's a lot better than what we thought from last week look at these Animals getting tangled. There's probably a better system, huh? What do all the other meteorologists who go outside with their cats and dog do uh, to keep track of them while they talk about the weather forecast and uh, just using no script and trying to memorize what graphics look like? Yeah, that's what I thought. Nobody else does this. Why do I challenge myself like this, Steve? It's fun. It's fun. It's a hobby. And look at this view. How can you not? Where is the wind right now, Steve? It's up in the sky, it's gonna mix down. And now that we're within 24 hours of the event, it's mostly play by play. So you follow us on Twitter and you look at the radar and you just say, here it comes, here it comes. And then tomorrow, probably be a lot of people without electricity where it snows and where we get the heaviest wind. Now that regional coverage doesn't look as intense as it did yesterday, does it Steve? So it's a little less threatening of a storm than we may have thought, but. That's not the end of it, is it? What's gonna happen after this? Well, let's go to, how about the 850, a continental view. Uh, the purple is the deep cold, the yellow is the warm, and we can really see that front that stretches out from Labrador to Mexico, sweeping through with our cold air coming in, and then an even colder shot Wednesday into Thursday. Steve, we're gonna be near zero in Northern New England Thursday morning, but then here comes a warm front. And look at the yellow coming out of Canada where it's record warm late in the week. And that warm air is gonna try and come at us Friday and Saturday, but then here comes another cold front with more purple coming at us early uh, next Monday. Now we're at day nine or so, Tuesday. And boy, has the forecast for next weekend been changing all over the place. You wanna see something funny, Steve? All right, here's the guidance from 36 hours ago for from the Euro. We showed it yesterday morning with a storm over Kentucky and Tennessee. And then yesterday during the day, the next guidance came out and said, no, that storm's gonna be in southeastern Canada. This is run 12 hours later. And then last night says, no, that storm's gonna be over the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> and that's for 1 a.m. Monday, December 18th. All those three different outputs. Oh, you wanna see the graph cast too? 
Here's the graph cast that Google deep mind artificial intelligence taken over the world forecast has a low east of North Carolina. So what's going to happen? <laughs> All right, it's going to get very cold around here in the middle of the week. We're going to be snow skiing and then it's going to warm up for Friday and Saturday. Then we're going to be saying, what's going to happen to this storm over the weekend? And there is going to be a major storm somewhere on the East Coast, Monday into Tuesday, 18th and 19th. I think they're going to be able to phase. So my gut says there's going to be a potential nor'easter here, Wednesday, excuse me, Monday the 18th or Tuesday or maybe into Wednesday the 20th. So parts of New England are guaranteed a white Christmas, especially the parts in Vermont where we've had just tremendous amounts of snow. The tram at Jay Peak opened the early this season yesterday but today it's not running because it's too windy up there wind air moving from high to low pressure steve what do you see down there what are you looking at oh yeah huh. <laughs> rex says rex heard me say what are you looking at rex come over here and see the dog it, it looks like a spaniel those things love to run and play t-rex where are you all right you want to go inside <laughs> all right I'll leave you with some uh, tree hunting yesterday. We went tree hunting. Well, we had to go truck hunting and then tree hunting and then tree lighting and tree stories and getting off of Cape Cod. I saw a tiny bit of snow still on the ground in Sandwich. And then when I got off and hang them, oh, by the way, Christmas tree shops not being open. That really hurts. That really hurts, Rex, uh, Steve. Uh, Christmas tree shops not open, but when I got off the highway in Hingham and moving to Weymouth, there was actually still some snow on the ground. So we had snow on the ground for four days in a row. And that wasn't really in the forecast from a week out, except for here on Out the Door, weather and more. Thanks for watching, happy Sunday. It's been some pretty interesting cloud formations today. We're in Hyannis, not far from where uh, we were born here at the Cape Cod Hospital. And it's new truck day for someone in the family. <laughs> I haven't had a new truck in a long time, but as long as someone in the family has one, they're in good shape. Uh, time to go tree shopping now. This is more my style, uh, though I'd like it a Rubicon and a two-door. Seems like they're all four doors nowadays. Unlimited sport. What's it say? I don't see the price. If you have to ask, can't afford it. It's 2017, though. A little big. About... Three years into this major cluster intersection, Willow Street and 28. There used to be a big brick building there now. It's like scenic train rides. Maybe they're building a new train station. I haven't seen these signs before. It's just been messed up though, the intersection. Keep it local here in South Dennis, where not only do they sell Christmas stuff and gardening stuff, I just saw some fish in here. Just gotta go off the beaten path once in a while. It's like 10 steps from the parking lot. I wonder how many people even come up here. Yeah, always have to have some moving water to keep, keep oxygen levels up. Nitrogen levels down. Ooh, there's a big one there. Decisions, decisions. Cook fur, balsam fur, cook balsam. Get some phrases over there. Good fences make good neighbors. It's a pretty looking fence. Pretty gray sky. Having a little lighting party out here in this uh, Charlie Brown tree that I planted about uh, 10 years ago on the hottest day in July one year. And now uh, we've got uh, three judges making sure it looks symmetrical. You're all invited to make it look more symmetrical when it gets dark and how it looks from your yard. There it is. It's, uh, let's see, my 60th year with tree here, your 50th ninth. <laughs> well, not exactly the same spot, but pretty, pretty close. I don't think that house was there when we were little. Cool clouds, really fun. Good day. Thanks, Kev. Thanks, Kev. Kevin's also gonna put some lights on this tree, which I brought home from Vermont when I lived in Sutton, Vermont. This came back in 1987 and it was about two feet tall and now it's about uh, eight feet tall. A few Saturday raindrops. 
little surprised, but why not? Several warm fronts are coming through. All right, that's enough for today. Sun's going down, 410. And more and more and more. Still some leaves on the trees down here. Departing, Cape God.